Hello, my dear students. I am Associate Professor of Department of Human Anatomy and Medical Terminology of Azerbaijan Medical University, Anar Abdullah. And the topic of our today's lecture is the functional anatomy development, anomalies, and variations of respiratory organs. This is plan of our today's lecture. First of all, uh, we will talk about the structure of respiratory organs. Then, I explain your the development of these organs, organs of respiration, and um, finally, we will talk about the anomalies and the clinical anatomy of nose, larynx, trachea, and the lungs. Respiratory system. The respiratory system is a very important system of human body as you know for normal functioning of many systems many other systems the human organism needs the oxygen the respiratory system respiratory apparatus system or respiratory that name provide the body with oxygen is also involved in the excretion of carbon dioxide from the body formed after the gaze exchange. The respiratory system is involved in the excretion of substances formed in the bronchi. Also, the respiratory system is involved in voice formation. The respiratory system consists of the respiratory tracts, upper and the lower, formed by the connection of tubular organs. And the central organ of this system are lungs they are providing the gaze exchange you are looking at this picture the respiratory system and uh, if we change the slide we'll talk about the upper respiratory tract upper respiratory tract it includes the nasal cavity also nasal and the oral parts of the pharynx yes i know the respiratory tracts are also divided into the upper and the lower and the lower respiratory tract consists of the larynx, trachea and bronchi. Again, the upper respiratory tract it consists of that. It includes the nasal cavity, nasal and the oral parts of the pharynx. The lower respiratory tract begins from larynx, then it passes to the trachea and then to main bronchi right and left ones upper respiratory tract functions the first function passageway for respiration yes the respiration this process begins in the nasal cavity yes so like later we will talk about the functional and anatomical uh, features of the nasal cavity but from the material of the last semester you know about the nasal cavity actually about the bony framework of nose of nasal cavity you know the walls of the nasal cavity bony nasal cavity the upper lower anterior and the two lateral walls or the side walls of the nasal cavity but you have to understand the upper respiratory tract it doesn't consist just a way, just a tube for transmitting of air. No, no. Because the here, the many other processes, many other processes are happened. For example, the air must be moistened, also must be warmed in this part of the respiratory tract, in the upper cranial part of the respiratory tract, also nose, and the other accessory cavities of the nose or they are known as the paranasal sinuses resonate the voice they resonate the voice and they form very unique very characteristic for each human or each person his or her own voice yes nasal cavity has as minimum two functions two functions it takes place in two systems uh, I mean the respiratory system 
also the smell organ yes you know the nasal cavity also acts like a sensory organ because the upper part of the nasal cavity i mean the superior nasal meatus and the nasal septum corresponding part of the nasal septum here you can find the many receptors from the word of recipe reception receiving they receive several odors, several molecules of odors, and they act as smell organ. Yes, we will talk about that during the next semester when we will study the sensory organs. Nasal cavity, also other part of the upper respiratory tract, such as the, you can look at this picture, the nasal part of the pharynx oral part of the pharynx here the epithelium act like the filter like the filter for incoming air and uh, several foreign uh, bodies if they are more than the 50 microns they can catch by the mucose membrane actually by the ciliary epithelium of the nasal cavity and the nasal part of the pharynx also is covered by the epithelium which there is um, continuation of epithelium of nasal cavity yes i told you now i am repeating the upper respiratory tract the moistness and the warmth in coming air also it takes place in resonating um, of the voice and the lower respiratory tract it locates distally and it includes the larynx larynx has several functions i'll explain you then the larynx continues to the trachea and the trachea at the level of the disc between the fourth and the fifth thoracic vertebrae divides into the right and the left main bronchi the functions of the lower respiratory tract the larynx provide the passing of air into the trachea and the trachea divides into the main bronchi yes each main bronchus enters into the corresponding lung and here they ramificate the right uh, one right main bronchus ramifies within the right lung and it divides into three lobar bronchi why because the right lung consists of the three lobes but left main bronchus it divides into the two lobar bronchi why uh, it's very clear because the left lung consists of the two lobes yes finally this ramification, I'll explain it also, um, to the bronchi of segments, then the lobular bronchi, and the other ramification samples end in the alveoli, where the gaze exchange, gaze exchange occurs. Larynx also works as a voice apparatus and provides the formation of voice just voice not the uh, talking not the speech just the voice forms here larynx has the protective function because the cough the one of the symptoms or of the several diseases also um, some infections or just uh, for foreign bodies when the foreign bodies other um, more the larger bodies enters into the this tube i mean the respiratory tube they form the some reception and that they are received by the mucose membrane of the larynx and the protective mechanism of the larynx the this organ is very rich with receptors yes and they cough as a protective function happens here and the nasal cavity of course our first um, 
part of our lecture about the upper respiratory tract must be devoted to the nasal cavity. Yes, the nose, the external nose is just elevation at the middle part of the face. Yes, nose has the root, radix, and the apex, apex nasi. Yes, and two lateral walls together they form the dorsum nasi, and the air passing through the, the nasal cavity changes, of course. It changes. The cilia of the epithelium covering the mucous membrane retain the dust particles. I mean, the, if these particles, if these the bodies more than the 50 micron, they are retained here by the epithelium. Then remove them, remove them in the form of the nasal mouth and purify the air as if filtering the air very important function also the mucus produced by their nasal glands located in the mucous membrane moisturizes the air and has a bactericidial effect due the numerous venous plexuses yes we will talk about it slightly later numerous venous plexuses in the mucous membrane and actually in the submucosa the air warms up here and you are looking at this picture it's the sagittal section of the nasal cavity on the picture and here on the preparation you know the lateral wall of the nasal cavity is the very interesting part because they do the presentation here the three nasal turbinates inferior middle and superior they are also known, known as the nasal conca conca single conca plural the lateral wall of the nasal cavity is enlarged is enlarged and under the each nasal turbinate or conca there is the corresponding nasal meatus or simply saying under the inferior nasal conca the inferior nasal meatus under the middle nasal concha the middle nasal meatus and under the superior nasal concha the superior nasal uh, meatus is located inferior and the middle nasal meatus is what does it mean meatus passageway passageway they act as a, the respiratory part of the respiratory system superior nasal meatus as i noted before this is the part of the smell organ smell organ is located here this is the sagittal section of the nasal cavity you are looking at this uh, conca inferior this one uh, middle and the superior nasal conca and you are looking at this picture superior nasal conca middle nasal conca and inferior nasal concha this part of the nose the no nose nasal cavity uh, is divided into the nasal vestibule nasal vestibule and the uh, nasal cavity proper proper nasal cavity proper nasal cavity is divided into three meatuses you know from your practical classes that the nasal wings or the alanasi they are formed by the cartilage, by greater uh, ale majoris cartilage and uh, several two or three minor cartilage. Um, their inner surface of these wings uh, are correspond to the nasal vestibule. Behind the nasal vestibule, there is the nasal cavity proper. And in the submucosa of this zone, there is the Kisselbach zone. There are many venous plexuses. Venous plexuses, they act for warming up of the inspired air. But you have to know the one moment. Venous plexuses, the venous blood, you know, it's not so hot. It's cold. And the, just now, the modern investigations also have showed that mainly the warming of the air is the function 
of the paranasal sinuses. Yes, uh, we told about it during the last semester, as you know, into the, this nasal meatosis, except the inferior nasal meatosis, because it doesn't receive any uh, paranasal sinus. Middle and the superior nasal meatosis, the place for opening of this, this the paranasal sinuses. Para means the around, around, around the nose, paranasal. And these are the frontal sinus, ethmoid labyrinth, uh, sphenoid sinus, and the larger maxillary sinus or antrum hymere. The lateral wall, also in the, this preparation, the right one, um, uh, also is prepared by me. And uh, this one, uh, you are looking at the this uh, nasal conche in this preparation for example on the right side the middle uh, nasal uh, concha uh, has been removed you are looking at these meatuses and the middle nasal meatus is larger than the superior and inferior ones look at this place if we will continue you can look at the um, in this picture the without the middle nasal meatus and the connection this connection please look at it a connection of the middle nasal meatus with the frontal sinus this is known as the infundibulum etmoidale and it ends here by the hiatus semilunaris hiatus semilunaris at the deep part of this hiatus there are there are openings of the maxillary sinus maxillary sinus also frontal sinus also in this picture you are looking at the anterior and the middle ethmoidal cells are opened in the middle nasal meatus please imagine it the middle nasal meatus is received the four sinuses if we, you are looking at the anterior and the middle Etmoid cells like the different sinuses, maxillary sinus, frontal sinus, uh, also anterior etmoidal cells, and the partly middle etmoidal cells, they open into the middle nasal meatus. It means that here, the inspiration by the middle nasal meatus is more and the more physiologic. Uh, we can look at again in this uh, little video we are looking at this elements sphenoid sinus yes uh, it is opened into the superior nasal meatus in this picture is shown under the number of the three the you are looking inferior nasal meatus in newborn the inferior nasal meatus doesn't develop because the inferior nasal conca just lies on the uh, hard palate it develops slightly later at the six months of the baby life first they develop the middle nasal meatus middle nasal meatus is larger yes and there is inspiration by this uh, meatus more and the more physiologic why because it receives the more uh, paranasal sinuses yes um, in this picture, okay, again, you are looking at the paranasal sinuses, and the, I uh, have showed the special uh, the X-ray materials. You are looking the this is the cella turtica. You know the sphenoid sinus, maxillary sinus, ethmoid labyrinth. Yes, this part of the uh, respiratory tract, the nasal cavity, is very very important, very important because the warming moistening yes and the catching of foreign bodies um, these main processes are happened in in the nasal cavity also nasal cavity with the old paranasal sinuses act like the resonator of voice you know the voice each voice each sound the speech actually is unique for any person why the same structures. Why? I'll explain it, of course, the later. You are looking again 
at the element of the body, bone, uh, bony and the cartilaginous nose. You are looking at the lateral cartilage of the nose. Cartilago alaris majoris, uh, one at each side and two or three minor uh, cartilage of the nasal wings. They form the nasal openings or the nares, nostrils, nostrils for passing the air here. And look at the nasal septum. If we are explaining, if we are studying the nasal cavity, we have to talk about the nasal uh, and the cartilaginous septum of the nose because the you know maybe the from last semester material yes you know it um, that the nasal septum is formed by the ethmoid bone its perpendicular plate and the vomer from this semester also you have studied the nasal septum during your practical classes the sept ampere septal cartilage also takes place in the formation of the nasal septum till the age of six there is the some elements the connective tissue elements between them they don't fuse at the age of the six the nasal septum is formed totally and you know it's the due in the good and the very close relation with development of the middle part of the nose larynx the beginning part of the our inferior um, respiratory way is located on the anterior part of the neck below the hyoid bone in males between the superior border of the fifth and inferior border of the seventh cervical vertebra in females, the inferior border of the fourth and the superior border of the seventh cervical vertebrae. In the middle line, the larynx is located under the skin. In men, the larynx is fused in front at angle and they compose of the laryngeal prominence, Adam apple. It begins to form at the age of the six or seven in boys, of course, and at the age of ten to twelve the dumb apple and the laryngeal prominence is formed the vertical size of larynx is equal to 4 4.4 centimeter transverse size 2.6 4.3 centimeter yes you are looking at this picture and the video the skeleton of the larynx consists of the three pair and three unpaired cartilage yes also we have to classify them like the Hyaline and elastic hyaline cartilage are the thyroid, cricoid, yes, also the arytenoid, except it's the vocal process. And you are looking at this very interesting organ because, yes, it's the respiratory organ, but also it takes place in the formation of the voice. Also, it has the protective function, I told it before and uh, what is the muscular apparatus the and also the cartilaginous element the cartilaginous element are the visit card of the all organs of the respiratory way because the respiratory tube if we look at the uh, respiratory way like the tube but actually it is the tube it consists of the cartilaginous element because the lumen of this way from up to down must be open must be open every second if we compare the larynx or the trachea more the closed trachea with the esophagus esophagus can be open or they can be closed it depends on the situation but the respiratory ways they must be open every time and every moment every second the laryngeal apparatus the muscular apparatus and the cartilaginous apparatus very interesting moment the fourth and the fifth the arch uh, our pharyngeal arch they are source for development of the cartilage but just cartilage here the very important and the muscles the muscles of the larynx you know you know the from the our 
explanation of the muscular system they are the striated but we have to classify them like the uh, for enlargement or for narrowing of the voice cleft you are looking at the topography of the uh, larynx under the skin yes and you know the laryngeal cavity it's divided into the upper large uh, the middle narrow and the lower or lower also large part what does it mean it's the important for understanding of the voice production there are many and uh, many classification many theories about the production of the voice but first of all I want to remind you the connections of the larynx yes the larynx as an organ as a unique organ has the interrupted and uninterrupted connection it has the diarthrosis or the synovial joints like the our arytenoid cartilage arytenoid cartilage connect with the cricoid cartilage form the joint articulatio also our thyroid cartilage also connect with the cricoid form the gain the articulatio movable joint movable joint and the movement happens here this is the end of your, this video you are looking at the uh, epiglottic cartilage it's elastic yes and in newborn it locates more and the more upper than in adulthood it locates upper than the root of tongue it's important during the swallowing and the breathing for the baby life but you have to understand you are looking at these ligaments ligamentum vocale they become the narrow they become the close to each other yes then the cleft between them widens what's happened there is the classification at the beginning from the uh, 40s of the 9th 19th century the professor garcia explains the production of voice like the passive process just the uh, air pass through the inferior part inferior large part to the upper the wider part and vibrates it just air vibrates the um, ligaments vocal ligaments this theory um, now it's the more and the more have been criticized at the 60s of the last uh, uh, century professor Yusson, a french um, physiologist and the scientist explained it the by the other way by the other way of understanding uh, and then he explained like the these elements the ligaments vocal ligaments are active they are very active and they vibrate the voice they vibrate the voice but it when it passes from the lower to upper part the air pass the um, concrete way it depends on the person yes i told you before yet all apparatus of the voice is the same we have the laryngeal muscles we have the musculus cricaritinoides uh, posterior for widening of this uh, cleft you are looking at this cleft yes the voice cleft and uh, for narrowing we have the uh, musculus uh, arytenoides transversus transverse arytenoid muscle also oblique arytenoid muscle yes these muscles for the narrowing also musculus cricoarytenoides lateralis and the musculus tiroarytenoides these four muscles for narrowing yes and the two muscles the musculus cricotyroides cricotyroid muscle and the musculus vocalis musculus vocalis they for tension the vocal cords or the vocal ligament this is a very important moment musculus vocalis you know from the semester last semester material the, uh, about the contraction of the muscles you know that the, each muscle has the beginning point and insertion attachment mm, but also you have listened about the uh, special way special kind of contraction the isometric contraction isometric contraction means the size of this muscle doesn't change does the tension happens here 
and the contraction of the musculus vocalis happens by this way by this way of course the now there are many new investigation between the myoelastic uh, theory of the Garcia and the neuromotor theory of the Euston for the connected connection of them but they are the uh, subject of the another topic subject of the another um, the conversation uh, if you will be work we will be otolaryngologist um, or physiologist uh, you will um, study these processes more and more deeply and you are looking again uh, at the voice cleft at the elements of the superior part of the laryngeal cavity laryngeal vestibule and inferiorly yes of course the larynx pass to the trachea being connected with this tube by ligamentum cricotracheale yes trachea is the simple tube and it passes inferiorly and at the level of the disc between the fourth and the fifth uh, thoracic vertebrae, the trachea um, makes the bifurcation. Bifurcation, it means the formation of the right and left main bronchi. Right main bronchus is wider but shorter, three centimeter length, and the left main bronchus is the longer but narrower. 4.5 centimeter in length. The structure of these bronchi mm, is the same with the structure of the trachea. It means the U-shaped cartilage from the wall of this element U-shaped because the posteriorly the ends of this cartilage they don't uh, close, don't uh, form the total ring because the esophagus, esophagus passes behind the trachea. And you are looking at the lungs, right and left lung, they are important central organs of the respiratory system. Yes, they are very interesting way development of the lung, which I'll explain also later, but you have to compare. You have to compare the growth of the lungs. For example, if you will compare the neonate, I mean the newborn, and at the end of the first year of life of child, the lungs grows by four times. At the beginning part of the second childhood, you know, the second childhood begins at the age of the eight. The lungs grows the eight time, if you compare it with the newborn. Yes. At the end of the second childhood, is the twelfth age, a child the lungs grows by 10 times and at the age of the 20 at the age of 20 lungs grows by 20 times very interesting way of the growth and you also have to understand the around the lungs there is the negative pressure negative pressure and during the inspiration during the inspiration this negative pressure change from the minus 5 the minus the 7.5 and here the lungs are enlarged by the 500 cubic centimeters what does it mean it's just the volume of inspirated air around the lungs formation of the negative pressure you know from the material of the last semester also the change of the size of thoracic cavity is dependent on the contraction of diaphragm and also the vascularization of the heart's muscle also here is important it is very important and our right and left lung yes they are non-symmetric right lung is shorter but the volume of the right lung is greater it has the three lobes left one has the two lobes yes left one is the narrower and the when they but they sit on the diaphragm, they form the very sharp inferior board and during the inspiration, during the excursion of the lungs, yes, they, these inferior borders don't sit on the diaphragm, actually, they uh, continue, they continue this excursion inferiorly, why? Because the 
pleura, pleura, parietal pleura, which covers the uh, diaphragm, form the pleura diaphragmatica, diaphragmatic pleura, and the costal part in, from the inner side, from the costal pleura between them, the sinus. This sinus, there is the reservoir, the reservoir for the movement of the lung, for the easily movement for the, this, uh, the features of the lung. And between the two, I will not say the lung, between the two pleural sacs, because the lungs are closed, they are enclosed into the pleural sacs, between them is sagittal oriented space, which is known as the mediastinum. Mediastinum, anterior wall of the mediastinum is formed by the sternum and also posterior wall is formed by the bodies of thoracic vertebrae. You are looking at the medial surface or mediastinal surface of the lungs. Here is the hilum, hilum pulmonis, the door of the structure and on the door of the right lung superiorly there is located the main bronchus, then the artery and two vein by principle of the BAVV on the left lung superior located our artery, then the main bronchus and two veins ABVV, ABVV. But if you will go from the forward to backward, the veins are located anteriorly. VAB is important and you have to know uh, the door of lung helium doesn't covered by the visceral pleura here's the visceral pleura passes to the parietal pleura look at this picture form the pulmonary ligament pulmonary ligament which is very important and within the lungs within the lungs the these bronchi bronchi the, i mean the right and the left bronchus Correspondingly, they separate into the lobar, then into the segmentary branch. You are looking at segments. These segments, what does it mean segment? Segment, it's the part of the lung, a part of the parenchym of the lung, with the segmentary artery and segmentary bronchus at the center, and the segmentary vein locates peripherically. It's very important during surgical practice. Why? Because there is no anastomosis between the segmentary veins and uh, you can remove it uh, very easily, I mean the very easily for the surgeon of course, very easily uh, and uh, without the great bleeding, without great bleeding. Dividing into the segment is uh, important for this point of view and these segments also within the segments of the lungs, of course each segmentary bronchus divides eight maybe nine times and uh, finally we will get the bronchus with diameter which is equal to one millimeter and uh, just uh, just uh, we can find here traces of the cartilage and this bronchus bronchus lobularis passes to the terminal bronchi terminal bronchioli they are bronchiolus and in this level there is no any cartilage I mean the terminal bronchiole doesn't have the cartilage it has the circular oriented circular oriented muscular elements and it acts like the sphincter it controls regulates the entering the air into the distally located structure, alveolar ducts and the alveolar sacs and alveoli. And there's the wall of the alveolus so is very interesting because it's formed just the one layer, one single layer of epithelium and is covered by the um, capillary network, network, this network of the capillaries, they are the capillaries, they, do, they don't have the basal membrane just endothelium, it means that between the air around the alveoles, like within the alveoles and the air in the blood, between them just the two layer the epithelial endothelial uh, elements. And the, by the uh, rules of the physics, around the, under the rule of the diffusion, the 
carbon dioxide pass to the blood vessels to capillaries and the oxygen also uh, change the blood becomes the more and more rich with oxygen inspired air and exhaled air elements the terms is formed here gaze exchange formed gaze exchange happens here alveoli and when the air passes into the alveoli just two layer of epithelium and endothelium between the air in the alveoli and the ear the blood in the capillary network the number of the alveoli, the, mm, some authors also uh, have noted that uh, there are more than 1 billion alveoli, but as minimum 3, maybe 300, 350 million alveoli. And if we will open it, we will get the mm, special surface, which is equal to 60, 70 quadrate millimeter, quadrate meter square metric what does it mean the lungs are very simple if you are looking at from outside but they are very complex from the inside from inside you are looking again the gaze exchange process the air containing the oxygen and other gases comes into the body through the lungs in the lungs the oxygen is moved into the bloodstream and carried through the body. Red blood cells collect the carbon dioxide and transport it back to the lungs where it leaves the body when we exhale. Alveoli, the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the alveoli here. The alveoli, also alveolar ducts, alveolar sacs, and the respiratory bronchioli together form the morphofunctional unit of lungs uh, which is known as the asinus asinus pulmonary venial you are looking at it carries oxygenated blood to the heart pulmonary arterial carries the deoxygenated blood from the heart for the this <laughs> you can confuse the meaning of the artery and vein here but we will explain it we will study it at the cardiovascular system what does it mean artery and what does it mean when it means just the direction of the blood here is the very important and uh, as we uh, told uh, the pleura and the lungs the lungs are covered by the visceral pleura very interesting picture you are looking at the DP and the force the, to the water filled balloon it means the inner layer of this balloon this is the visceral pleura and the, the outside at some distance from the, this uh, visceral layer we will find the parietal, parietal layer of the uh, pleura. Uh, parietal pleura covers the ribs, the largest part of the parietal pleura, also mediastinum and the diaphragm. Development of the liver, uh, or the development of the lungs, and the development of all parts of the respiratory system is very interesting. Yes, functionally, the respiratory system is in the close relation to cardiovascular system, but by development, by development, it developed from the anterior surface of the cranial end, cranial end of the primary intestine. First of all it develops like the ampered structure ampered structure at the third week of development it goes downward then it divides into right and left uh, branches with the blind ends you are looking at the embryo the development of arytenoid swelling and the passing inferiorly this is the forms the future voice cleft the foramen circum of the forming uh, tongue and the epiglottis this is the epiglottis and it pass inferior this is laryngeal cavity will happen here and it goes downward downward from the trachea and the inferiorly it separates into the uh, right and main or left main bronchus again 
you are looking at the formation of the trachea bronchi and the lungs you are looking at this ampered structure which i have noted uh, this structure goes inferiorly yes very simple um, explanation a very simple observation um, here is here the respiratory diverticulum respiratory diverticulum and you are looking at it <clears throat> and as I told you the laryngeal elements just the, I mean the, the cartilage they develop from the fourth and the fifth uh, the arch uh, pharyngeal arch and it goes inferiorly yeah it passes to the right and the left lungs right and left lungs yes this process mm, may be mm, some abnormalities happen here but very interesting the right lung and left lung um, in, if you are looking with great attention to the formation of the right and left lung they they are paired organ but the um, structure is non-symmetric right lung has the three lobes left lung has the two lobes maybe no maybe the left lung it has the three lobes and the right lung has the two lobes or the very hard very dangerous situation when the trachea is obliterated or the trachea closed internally obliteration of the trachea happen or the obliteration of the bronchi also can be happen here yes the, the normal situation normal formation of the lungs then mm, till the 15 to 25 age the all parenchyme of the lungs form totally fully and the uh, development of respiratory system as i noted the palatin toruses had formed on the medial surface of maxillary processes we told about it uh, at our first lecture had been grown and separated the primary oral cavity or stomodeum into the nasal and upper side and oral cavity at the lower side the upper part of the primary oral cavity had been connected with the primary nasal cavity and form the nasal cavity itself there was a cleft between the palatine toruses at that time then these plates were fused with each other and constitute the palate itself the posterior part of oral cavity divides and form the upper part of the pharynx consequently the oral and the nasal cavities had been connected to pharynx yes pharynx has the dual function it takes place in respiration it takes place also in digestion it indicates the very close relation by development of these two main systems respiratory organs develop on the third week of the embryonic development behind the gill pockets or the pharyngeal pockets from the ventral part of the cranial end of fork according to its development the respiratory organs are connected with the intestinal tube the germs of respiratory organs were looked like a groove at the beginning beginning part then it, this groove had become too deepening its cranial end was connected to pharynx and the caudal end by widening had became the separate from the foregut and distance as a result this germ become an origin of the larynx trachea bronchi and the lungs from the common germ of lungs were developed two vesicles right and left at beginning as we told they are, were symmetric but do the heart the left lungs development wasn't as much as right one finally both lungs are non-symmetric from other hand each vesicle also develops non-equal right lung consists of three lobes while the left only two to con the connective tissues cartilaginous and the muscular elements of respiratory system are developed from mesenchyme the mucous membrane and glands of larynx trachea bronchial ramification and alveoli are developed from the entity and just several words about the topography of lungs because you were studying this process with your uh, teachers or you will study uh, the lungs as we noted the non-symmetric organs but I have to know the uh, position of the lungs and the non-symmetric moments here that you are looking at the position of the right lung 
this anterior border past the just behind the um, sternoclavicular corresponding sternoclavicular joint till the second sternocostal joint and here it passes slightly to the left it goes to, uh, to the left uh, level of the fourth rib slightly to the left from midline then it returns to the own side to the right side I mean and at the level of the sixth sternocostal joint the inferior border of right lung begins at the left side it, it's slightly but very important difference between them also anterior border originates at the level of the corresponding sternoclavicular joint uh, then it goes inferiorly at the level of the second uh, sternocostal joint it locates to the left from midline to the own side and it goes inferiorly downward and uh, it passes to the inferior border not at the level of connection of six rib with sternum at the connection of the uh, here the um, cartilage of the uh, six rib with the own uh, bony part it means that between two anterior margins in two anterior borders of the right and left lung there are two spaces superior and inferior space superior space above than the second sternocostal joint yes and the below the below than the fourth sternocostal joint they are known as the area interpleurica superior seotimica and area interpleurica inferior seopericardica um, the posterior border very interesting of the both lungs and also they are pleural uh, borders uh, are seen for the right and left lung this border between the line just the uh, line which connects the neck of the 11th uh, rib with the second head of the second rib this knowledge of course they are very important you your um, surgical practice your practice of the practical doctors in future especially um, I have finished if you have the questions you can contact me thank you for attention